The information in this module is accurate and complete to the best of our knowledge. All recommendations are made without guarantee on the part of the author or the sponsoring institutions. The author and the sponsoring institutions disclaim any liability in connection with the use of this information. Pairwise sequence alignments are widely used for comparing biological sequences. Alignments are ranked with a score, and in general, only alignments that achieve the maximum possible score are considered in these comparisons. As pointed out in a previous presentation, the 60 of the global alignment problem search spaces increases exponentially with the length of the sequences, making direct searches unfeasible. This presentation discusses a method for finding the global alignment without performing direct searches. Describe the algorithmic strategy used in the algorithm of Needleman and Munch. Describe the main operation used to compute the array of scores and the array of pointers. Explain why the computation of the array of scores in order MN and the computation backtrack process is order M plus M. The needleman wunsch algorithm was introduced in 1970. The method uses an algorithm design technique called dynamic programming, which basically solves a problem through the solution of a sequence of smaller subproblems whose solutions are stored and used to produce the solution of a problem. Let X and Y be a pair of protein or amino acid sequences. The strategy of needleman wunsch is computing the score of the alignment of prefixes of the input sequences. The results are stored in a dynamic programming array denotated D. Each entry D IJ stores the score of the alignment of the prefixes from 1 to I of X and from 1 to J of Y. What allows the reuse of smaller prefix scores to compute the score of larger ones is this recursive formula that relates the score of the alignment of prefixes from 1 to I minus 1 and 1 to J minus 1. From 1 to I minus 1 and from 1 to J, and from 1 to i and 1 to j minus 1, with the score of the alignment of the prefixes from 1 to i and 1 to j. Notice that with this formula, a small number of operations are necessary to compute the score d, i, j. Here is a visualization of the action of the recursion in array d. The blue entry is produced by applying the recursive formula to the values immediately up, across, and to the left of the I, TH, and J, TH entry. D stores the scores, but it does not keep record of which of the three options produce the maximum. Such information, which is crucial to reconstruct the alignment, is stored on an auxiliary array referred as array of pointers. As its name indicates, this array stores pointers to the input of the recursive formula that achieves the maximum. In case that the two or three inputs produce the same maximum, the method is either adapted to select one or keep track of multiple pointers. A usual convention is to store a one in the matrix of pointers and the maximum was achieved using D. I minus 1, J minus 1. 2 if it was achieved using D, I minus 1, J. And 4 if it came from the option that uses D, I, J minus 1. The results of each computation is stored in an N times M array of the general form. The array has some border information that is placed in row and column 0. The rest of the entries are indexed with the indices of the characters in X and Y. Here's the dynamic programming array for the pair of sequences X equals CPARC and Y equals ACHPPAR. 
we have dropped the indices as they are easily derived from the positions of the characters in the sequences. Computations of D. For the sakes of simplicity, we use here a linear penalty map and do not show the array of pointers. The recursion is initialized by filling the borders of the array with negative multiples of the gap open value. Here is the detail of the second step in the computations. To the left of the blue cell is a zero obtained in the first step. The minus five across the diagonal and a minus 10 up the blue cell were assigned in the initialization. Now, according to the recursive formula, whose computations are shown in the box below the array, the blue cell, or D, 1, 2, equals 4. We may fill D row by row or column by column. Here is the detail of the computation of the last entry in the first row. Notice that the result, this is minus 21, is the score of the alignment of the prefixes, C of X, and ACHPPAR of Y. At this point, the recursive formula has been applied several times. We are about to complete the fourth row of D. In this particular application of the recursive relation, we have obtained five, which is the score of the alignment of the prefixes CPA of X and ACHPP of Y. The score, meaning the maximum score of the global alignment of CPARC and ACHPPAR with the Blossom 62 substitution matrix and a linear gap penalty of 5 is 5. It is worth remarking that the score of the global alignment will always be the last computation. This is the value in the bottom rightmost corner of D. There are no shortcuts. We have to compute each entry in the array to get to the last one. Therefore, the computation of the score involves of the order of MN applications of the recursive formula. This is what is usually expressed by saying that the needleman wunsch algorithm is order MN or N squared if N equals M. More specifically, if we are in position IJ and the array of pointers has a 2 in its IJ position, one moves one cell up and align the character X sub I with a gap symbol. If the array of pointers has a 1 in the IJ position, one moves one cell across the diagonal and align the characters X sub I and Y sub J. Finally, if there is a 4 in the IJ position of the array of pointers, one moves one cell to the left and align Y sub J with a gap symbol. We construct the global alignment of CPARC and ACHPPAR backwards, step by step using the matrix P of pointers as a lookup table. We start from the rightmost bottom corner of D which in this case is the cell 57 and look up to this 57 entry in P. Since the 57 entry in P is 2, we move one position up and align C and the gap symbol. Since we are now in position 47 in D, we look up to entry 47 in P. Since the 47 entry in P is 1, we move one position across the diagonal and align R with R. Our position in D is now 3, 6. We look up to entry 3, 6 in P. Since the position 3, 6 in P holds a 1, we move again to the next cell across the diagonal and align A with A. Our position in D is now 2, 5. Thus, we should look up in position 2, 5 in P. Since the position 2, 5 in P holds a 1, we move one more to the next cell across the diagonal and align P with P. We are getting close to the border of our arrays. Our position in D is now 1, 4, and we will continue moving along the line in the next step. Now we look up to 1, 4 in P. As expected, we have a 4 in position 1, 4 in P. Thus, we move one cell to the left and align P with a gap symbol. Our current position in D is 1, 3. 
Position 1, 3 holds a 4, so we move again one cell to the left and align H with the gap symbol. Our new position in D is 1, 2. We look up the entry 1, 2 and P. We're about to finish. Since position 1, 2 holds a 1, so we move to the next cell across the diagonal and align C with C. This takes us to position 0, 1 and P. And since the entry in position 0, 1, and P is 4, we move one cell to the left and align A with a gap symbol. For us, is a tedious process, but for a computer, is a very simple one. Indeed, this process is the cheapest, as it takes only n plus m steps. This is expressed by saying that backtrack is order m plus n, or simply n, if m equals n. The path left by the backtrack is in fact the graph of the global alignment. Needleman Wunsch algorithms provides a feasible way of solving the global alignment problem by replacing direct search with dynamic programming. The method returns an alignment with the highest possible score among all possible global sequence alignments of the input sequences.